Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed for our monthly GPU pricing update, the final one for 2022. The last few updates have been pretty interesting because we've finally gotten some new GPUs to talk about, namely the RTX 40 series from NVIDIA in previous videos, and of course now AMD's Radeon RX 7900 series with the terribly named 7900 XDX and 7900 XT. So as always, we'll be looking at how sales of those cards are going, how they have affected the broader GPU market, and if few things to think about if you are interested in buying a new graphics card right now. But before we get into all of that stuff... Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI's GeForce RTX 40 series of graphics cards and the epic PC case gear Unboxed 4090 Gaming PC, aka the Balan PC. During a recent live stream, we built our video editor Balan, the ultimate gaming PC, which he's been using to mostly play Warzone 2 and Fortnite, and has been loving the blazing fast performance. And the best news being, you can now own the Balan PC. Now, the key component that enables this PC to blast through the latest and greatest games with ease is the MSI GeForce RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio 24GB graphics card, supporting all the standard RTX 40 series features such as ray tracing, DLSS 3, and NVENC with AV1 encoding. The Balan PC is also armed with an Intel Core i9-13900K processor on the MSI MPG Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi DDR5 motherboard, so for more information, please check the links in the video description. So what we've talked about in last month's update regarding the latest NVIDIA GPUs has remained true in December as well. The GeForce RTX 4090 remains in strong demand and depending on your region can be a little difficult to purchase right now. Resupplies have been steady though lower than the initial supply at launch, but even that hasn't been enough to satisfy demand for the card in North America as an example, where the 4090 is currently out of stock at Newegg in both the US and Canada, at least via first party listings which are really Really the only listings you'd consider. Micro Center has also struggled to keep the card in stock. Locally here in Australia, the RTX 4090 is an even higher price model, so the high price hasn't led to as many sales, but right now at various retailers you can buy one of a few models, though the cheapest variants are typically unavailable right now. While ideally we'd be seeing more stock of the 4090, this is a pretty typical launch pattern that we expect to see settle early next year. As for the RTX 4080, well, things still aren't looking good for this card at all. It's easy to find the RTX 4080 for sale at retailers, and at no point has the card ever gone out of stock, as demand for this model has remained very low from well, basically as far back as its announcement. Part of this is also attributed to low stock of MSRP cards. Most of the models available at retailers like Newegg and Micro Center start at $1,300 US or above, which is a ludicrous and very unattractive amount for what is already not a well-priced product. It's not a great surprise that interest for those AIB variants is very low. Locally here in Australia, as we talked about last month, the RTX 4080 is an even worse deal, and that's led to very poor sales according to the retailers we've spoken to. The general consensus is only the absolute cheapest models have any chance of selling, with some struggling to sell their launch allocation, let alone any resupply since launch. Thanks to razor-thin margins, there's basically no room for price movement either, so don't expect to suddenly see cheaper cards without assistance from NVIDIA. Two retailers we spoke to were either already selling 4080s at cost price or were considering doing so just to clear out their existing inventory. With that said, I'm not sure if this situation applies outside of Australia, as NVIDIA GPUs are especially expensive here relative to some other regions. The contrast to this is the Radeon RX 7900 XTX, which by all accounts was a good launch, though a little different to Nvidia's launches. This card was relatively popular and sold out at many retailers within the first hour of sales going live. Some people even attempted to get a great deal thanks to an amusing price error from Best Buy. But at this point, a week after launch, it's quite difficult to buy the XTX model, and I expect that to remain the case for the next few weeks, both in North America and in other territories like Australia. What we have learned in addition to this are two main themes. One is that AMD didn't supply near the amount of 7900 XTX models as Nvidia did for the RTX 4090 at launch, though again, this can be region dependent. 
while the 4090 had a surprisingly large amount of stock at launch that helped see huge numbers of sales, the 7900 XTX was more typical in its supply, which is to say on the low side for day one demand. So while it is good for AMD that the 7900 XTX sold out quickly, part of this is tempered by inadequate supply. So retailers we spoke to said day one sales for the 4090 were higher. Pretty standard stuff for a GPU launch. Sales are almost always dictated by the amount of supply, which usually comes in below demand, unless the card in question is especially undesirable like the 4080. However, resupplies for the 7900 XTX have been coming in strong and in respectable numbers, with those resupplies quickly selling out. So the demand for this model is still there beyond day one and will likely continue into next year. Of course, we are just a week out from its launch. It's very typical for a new GPU to sell out within the first week or two. It's what happens in one month, two months from now that will really tell the tale on supply and demand. So fingers crossed we see good availability in January. The second theme was that the 7900 XTX easily outsold the RTX 4080. In fact, it wasn't even that close based on what we've heard. Gamers are preferring the 7900 XTX over the 4080 in this price range, which does make sense based on its overall value and performance relative to the 4080. One retailer told us the 7900 XTX on day one would have outsold the RTX 4080 in total since its launch, if not for limited XTX supply, so, which so far has you know, been lower than that of the 4080. Gamers are definitely voting with their wallets here and preferring the better value option, so it will be interesting to see where it settles once supply catches up. Does AMD have a long-term winner here in the $1,000 price range, or is the RTX 4080 an easy launch day target given its poor reception? I think competition will certainly heat up when NVIDIA launches the RTX 4070 Ti, which rumors say should come in early January, plus there's plenty of potential for price drops. We still think pretty much the entire high-end market is overpriced right now from both AMD and NVIDIA, so whether that translates into slow sales will be seen in the coming months. While the 7900 XTX has been a hot seller, the same can't be said for the 7900 XT. It's a similar story to the RTX 40 series where the flagship model is in hot demand, but the tier below just isn't good value and isn't capturing the interest of buyers. Our understanding is the 7900 XT hasn't been as dire for sales as the 4080, with retailers not feeling as pained in part due to less stock to try and move, but the 7900 XT has hardly been flying off shelves. In most territories, the card hasn't sold out or hasn't remained sold out for long, with plentiful availability even at the MSRP just a week after launch, whether we're talking Australia or United States or elsewhere. Usually that's a good indicator of weak demand, as the norm for GPU launches is poor availability in the first couple of weeks, especially for the cheapest models. The issue here, of course, being the 7900 XT is actually worse value than the 7900 XTX based on our cost per frame metrics and the data from many other reviews who all basically found the same thing. The XT is 10% cheaper than the XTX, but 17% slower on average at 4K, which is hardly going to drum up interest. If AMD wants to see strong sales of this model, the price should be dropped to no more than $800 US, ideally $750, though whether or not they actually want to sell this card in great numbers or simply use it to drum up sales for the more expensive XTX remains to be seen. If the XT continues to sit on shelves though, maybe a price adjustment will be necessary. If you are hoping that new graphics card releases would see further price reductions across the rest of the market, I have disappointing news for you. Prices have stagnated. On the Nvidia side, pretty much the entire high end of the RTX 30 series is no longer available, with stock for those GPUs finally running out and being replaced by the RTX 4090, 4080 and other soon to be released models. The cards in the 3070 tier and below remain available, but with no significant price movement over the last three months. Incredibly, this means the RTX 3060 and 3050 still are not available at the MSRP, and for some models like the RTX 3070, prices have actually gone up. I wouldn't be surprised if the 3070 sells out within the next month or two as Nvidia looks to launch its replacement. On the AMD side, we're also seeing price stagnation, and although most models are still available, supply is dwindling for the higher tier cards. This is why models like the RX 6800 XT are now much more expensive than they were when we checked in November. All of the low cost 520 US dollar units have sold out, only leaving expensive models. 
In the mid-range and lower end of the product stack, AMD pricing has bottomed out at around 20 to 30% under the MSRP. So while pricing hasn't dropped substantially in the last few months, at least the floor for these cards is well under MSRP, like it should be for two-year-old GPUs. Why hasn't the launch of new GPUs seen price movement across the rest of the market? Well, as we've talked about in our reviews, both Nvidia and AMD have launched new models that are priced merely to deliver equivalent value to last generation models in the current market, rather than significantly better value like we've seen at some past launches. For example, the 7900XTX really could be part of the same family as the RX 6800, as it offers around double the performance at double the price. The oversupply of new graphics cards is also less of a factor now than it was several months ago at the collapse of crypto mining. Those GPUs have slowly sold out over time, with retailers saying demand for those cards did increase around the announcement and release of the new RTX 40 series GPUs. With less inventory pressure, companies have less incentive to make further price corrections. With no price movement in the new market, we do see price stagnation for the used market as well. If you are planning on buying an NVIDIA Ampere GPU for example, there's no improvement compared to last month's prices, giving buyers still around a 23% price reduction on current retail prices on average. There's also been no significant price change for higher end GPUs that are now out of stock, as the market has settled towards a solid equilibrium, and some of these cards are being sold in significant quantities right now. Similar story for AMD's RX 6000 series, while you're not getting as much of a discount on the used market and volumes are much lower relative to Nvidia, there hasn't been any significant price movement compared to last month. Then for Nvidia's Turing generation, despite these cards being older than Ampere again, what happened at the newer end of the market does dictate what happens here. Lots of people are selling RTX 2080s now for example, but the price has actually gone up somewhat compared to last month. Some of these models aren't great value either, such as the RTX 2070 Super at $253 on average, which sounds cheap, but it's similar performance to a used RX 6600 XT, and those go for just $207 on average. The GTX 16 series isn't too bad on the used market though. Yes, pricing has stagnated and risen slightly compared to last month, but if you're after a GPU for less than $150 US and you don't want to go all the way back to an RX 580, there's some decent choices here. The GTX 1660 Super for just $124 on average is much faster than the RX 6500 XT, yet is only slightly more expensive on the used market and much cheaper compared to new models of that GPU. The next step up is the RX 6600, which costs 40% more used and offers about 40% more performance, so that feels right at the moment. Then finally, we have the RX 5000 series, which also offers great value below $200 on the used market, despite a small price increase month on month. Supply isn't as strong as it once was for these cards, as many miners have already flogged them off, but there's still a reasonable range to choose from, and pricing is quite attractive for gaming, though beware that most used models will be heavily mined on. Overall, it's been an interesting month for the GPU market, largely dominated by the launch of new AMD GPUs with decent demand for the RX 7900 XTX in particular. AMD just needs to supply more of those models while they can capitalize on the poor positioning of the RTX 4080. Like with many past launches, Nvidia has substantially outsupplied AMD for the time being, so AMD will need to rely on fast restocks to keep up with gamers interested in their flagship. The RTX 4090 also remains in good demand, and there are signs of recovering availability there. What's been quite unique about this year's GPU launches is the terrible reception for the tier below models in the RTX 4080 and RX 7900 XT. Neither of those products received good reviews, and buyers are voting with their wallets, typically avoiding them in favor of other options. It's a different strategy from both brands that we haven't really seen before, incentivizing the purchase of the higher end and most expensive models. Whether or not that will be a good strategy long term remains to be seen, as there are plenty of buyers choosing to wait for even cheaper products, buy from existing stock, or even heading to the used market to satisfy their needs. There's also just been the feeling in general of Quite a weak GPU generation and lots of disappointment among shoppers, which I think is now being reflected in stagnating prices. There's no need to drop prices any further if the new stuff isn't gobbling up most of the sales and all of the attention. Older cards from the now previous generation are still very viable options in today's market, and the lack of anything below $900 in the RTX 40 and RX 7000 series has shut out the vast majority of buyers for now. New products at or below $500 can't come fast enough. They are much needed to to breathe some life into this space.
With this new strategy from the GPU vendors of making the most expensive model look as good as possible, I think it's important to remember that you don't need to get caught up in the hype and spend well above your means. There will be new mid-range models in 2023, and if you keep choosing not to buy terrible value products, companies will have no choice but to respond with better pricing, not just for those existing cards, but also for upcoming launches. Waiting is just fine. Most GPUs are genuinely quite capable of playing today's game, so no, you don't necessarily need an RTX 4090. Anyway, that's it for this brief GPU pricing update video. Uh, if you do appreciate these videos, let us know in the comments below and we'll probably keep continue doing them in 2023. You can also support our independent testing and analysis via our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You can access to things like our monthly live streams, our BTS videos. Um, what else have we got? We've got our Discord community as well. Lots of good stuff in there. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.